Hello everyone, welcome to Reading with Reference. Uh, to any new viewers of our video series, uh, my name is Kim Christopher. I'm a reference librarian at the Haverford Township Free Library, and I will just be sharing with you some things I've read recently as reading recommendations. So, I have here today Cats of the Louvre. Louvre, Louvre. <laughs> as you can see, I cannot pronounce things, but uh, I'll stick with Louvre, and hopefully I got that right, but uh, by Taiho Matsumoto. And with this uh, Japanese manga, it's a bit of a fascinating and peculiar story where it's set in modern day Paris, France in the museum. And when everyone has left the museum at night, uh, only like maybe a guard or two, the, there's a group of cats who live in the attics of the Louvre. And at night, they assume human form and the Louvre becomes their playground. And amid... Among the group of cats, this story focuses centrally on this one cat, Snowby, the runt of the group. But Snowby has this, shall we say, power where he can travel between the paintings. Uh, you know, as simple as like opening a door, stepping through the doorway, he can enter into a painting and interact with the subjects of the painting, you know, be it people, animals, or whatever. And... Yeah, he has the ability to travel between any of the paintings in the Louvre. And that's pretty, th this basic plot, but then it gets more complex as you read on, as it's found out there's something of a mystery involving the Louvre, not just Snowby, but many, many years ago in the Louvre, a young girl disappeared without any explanation, poof, in the thin air, and she had always asked people a certain question before she disappeared. Can you hear the voices of the paintings? Which is a direct reference to Snowby's ability to paint, uh, travel through between these paintings. And so begins something of a journey of Snowby to discover what happened to this little girl who in some ways knew beforehand about Snowby's ability to travel between the paintings and may have some sort of link to him in, in some manner or form. And... So yeah, that's just the basic plot. There's just so much going on uh, that I can't go into detail without spoiling the whole story. But um, if you love cats and you love art, you will love Cats of the Louvre. Um, you know, you always wonder what cats are thinking or what they're doing when you're not looking. Well, yeah, Cats of the Louvre just explores what happens when, you know, showing that maybe in some ways cats do have sort of like this human sort of form they can assume you know and do all sorts of weird and wacky things because they're human in that form doing these things that make sense to them it, it, yeah <laughs> just cats at their best in this book and then also in terms of art if you love art um matsumoto the art is all done in his own style uh just this sort of simplistic black and white manga style but uh well not simplistic but uh in any case, it's done in his own art, the way he does art, and yet, whenever he does references to classic uh, art, he just, he does, takes extreme detail in recreating all the paintings of all the history in, in human history, and it's just absolutely gorgeous, stunning, what he does with the artwork here. It is absolutely hard to describe in words just how beautiful this artwork in this manga is and so i highly recommend cats of the lube if you love just beautiful artwork and are a fan of art history and you're a cat lover so yeah it has everything you love about those aspects in here and then uh finally here uh, in the short time i have here uh i have the graphic novel the Wizard's Tale by Kurt Busiek and David uh, Wenzel. <laughs> uh, and this is just a really lighthearted, humorous fantasy story uh, that involves the character of Baffelrog, uh, this evil wizard and his, shall we say, familiar uh, toad, uh, Grumpport. Well, and the term... Evil Wizard is used very loosely in this story as Balrog is a failure. Any attempt he does to, you know, bring calamity and disorder upon the lands and people 
always results in happiness and for good fortune. And Balfourog, he's conflicted. You know, he wants to live up to the family name. He's a descendant of a long line of infamous evil wizards. And yet, at the same time, he preferred just, you know, go back to his castle, sit back on in his chair, and, you know, live in peace. But, well, unfortunately, in the midst of this almost, shall we say, midlife crisis, although he's not really. <laughs> but in any case, contemplating these issues, he is assigned a task by the head wizard of an evil order of wizards to find what's called the Book of uh, Wars. And the book is a spell book of magic that would allow evil to reign supreme eternally. And Baffle Rog, he's not really into it, you know, he wants to do it for the prestige, you know, to prove that he can be an evil wizard, but at the same time, he'd still just be kicking it back, taking it easy. But at the urgings of his familiar, Grumpwort, he does embark on a quest to find the book, and along the way, the quest doesn't become this mission to find the book, you know, for evil's sake, uh, but a journey of self-discovery where Baffelrog really does come to question, does he want to be an evil wizard? live up to the family name, or does he just want to live in peace, be happy for himself? And so, yeah, Wizard's Tale, wonderfully funny story about Baffleog just trying to, you know, be an evil wizard, failing, and all his, you know, lamentations of, oh, I'm such a failure, oh, I want to go back home and live in peace, you know, <laughs> all those things, really humorous, but I would recommend it just because of the artwork by David Wenzel, which just moves this story along. Um, Wenzel, he's done so much work over the t over time. He's done work in DC, Marvel, other publications, but he's well known for having done the artwork to the Hobbit comics, uh, the illustrations. And in every page, every single panel, even when the characters are just talking, you see the dedication to detail that he has. Uh, it might be of a stretch to say this, but I would say that this is his greatest work, where he's not bound by Tolkien's work. He's just doing it in his own style, and all the colors uh, and expressions of characters, it, it's wonderful. And it just moves the story along, and you're just hooked until the very end to see just what happens to Balrog, and yeah. Absolutely beautiful story, artwork. It all makes a great read. And <laughs> very short read, unfortunately. Uh, wish I had more of it, but can't have everything. But yeah, I highly recommend this as a read if you're looking for something that has a really lighthearted, heartwarming fantasy story with top-notch, excellent artwork to it. And, well... That is all I have uh, in terms of reading recommendations. Only a couple of things today, maybe more next week. But until we see each other again, then uh, please know the library is open. Uh, the hours are Monday through Wednesday, 10 to 6. Uh, Thursday, or I mean Monday, Wednesday, 10 to 8. Thursday, 10 to 6. And Friday, Saturday, 10 to 5. Uh, the library, you can come in, browse their collections, check items out, request items from other libraries. You can still do our contact curbside pick up if you like just call when you arrive to pick something up in our parking lot we'll bring it out to you and also you can come in use the computers use some of the other library services and well <laughs> until we see you again next week everyone i hope you have an absolutely wonderful day and take care